Sky Live. Brought to you by Helene Curtis, makers of Stop F deodorants, blowing cream, spray, and stick, suave hairdressing, and Endon Dandruff Treatment Shampoo. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. And tonight, What's My Line distinguishes itself by having as its guest panelist that tall, handsome congressman from California, the Honorable James Roosevelt. I have the great pleasure of introducing a very charming and wonderful lady whose column I read every morning in Washington to start the day right, <laughs> Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Ladies and gentlemen, now it's my privilege to introduce the radical member of this panel <laughs> who is wild enough to like girls who look like girls, Mr. Bennett Sir. Everybody's being very complimentary tonight, so I'm going to stay right in the mold. I want to introduce one of the real aristocrats of television, Mr. John Charles Day. Bennett is much too kind in his introduction, but there is something that I would... We were talking about something just before the show, and I think it needs mention. This week is National Library Week, and I think it would do us all some good if we paused for a moment to think about those fine people who run the libraries in our small towns and our big cities, and actually who do so much to keep good literature alive. Bennett's a publisher. I serve the craft of journalism, as Dorothy does. Bennett, as a matter of fact, has written a piece which is coming out in this week's Saturday Evening Post, the March 22nd, which says very simply that good books are here to stay, and his premise is that good books and good television. In fact, we feel anything that's good is here to stay. And so uh, I think uh, it's not improper for me to say that the panel and I would like you to join us in paying uh, good homage to those who keep our libraries and keep our culture and our heritage alive. Now, uh, that's the last kind thing I'm going to say tonight. Panel, <laughs> we've got a rough show for you tonight, and I hope you have a lot of trouble with it. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the show, and we'll meet our first challenger in just one minute. Let's meet our first contestant. Will you come in and sign in, please? I understand everything except that. <laughs> How are you? I'm this fine. Nice to see you. Would you tell us where you live? Uh, near Montrose, Pennsylvania. Montrose, Pennsylvania. Panel, would you meet Mr. X? Mr. X, the panel, needless to say, Mr. X is so designated because there is an area of identification we're a bit afraid of. And now, will you come with me, sir? Uh, are you familiar with the way we keep score? I have seen it before. All please. right, fine. Then let's let everybody at home and those who've been nice enough to join us here in the theater tonight know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right. Colonel, Mr. X is salaried, and with that, let's begin the general questioning with Dorothy Kilgallen. Uh, Mr. X, do both men and women enjoy what you do? Men and women? Mm-hmm. Very definitely, and children, too. Oh. Uh, would you consider yourself, in any sense, a performer? Uh, be, you'll have to repeat. No. no would I, you consider yourself a performer? I wouldn't think so. Would you? No, no. not as, any more than I can help. One down and <laughs> nine to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. X, tomorrow, I learn from 988 television shows, is St. Patrick's Day. Would your presence on this program in any way have anything to do with the fact that tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day? No, I love Ireland, but uh, I'm not Irish. Two down and eight to go, Miss Cresson. 
You do deal in services, do you, Mr. X? In the services, yes. Uh, do you have an office? Oh, yes. Good. Uh, do people come to you at your office for your services? Yes, very definitely. Uh, are they happier after they have had some consultation with you? Well, uh, sometimes, yes, sometimes no. Uh -huh. uh, I think it's only fair, Arlene, and I, I hope our guest will agree, that you should not be misled, that our, our guest does deal in services, and certainly initially there may be an approach made within the confines of an office. This does not, however, suggest that the services are necessarily restricted in their implementation to the four walls of an office. It's the implementation. That's that I what like I've always thought. Oh, yeah. uh, do you ever touch the people that you deal with? No, I don't. It's not necessary. He might, but it's not necessary. <laughs> Three down and seven to go, Mr. Roosevelt. Mr. X, do you, uh, or have you had anything to do with the government? Yes, I am in government service. You're in government service. You're given too much information. Don't you do that again. <laughs> um, Mr. X, um, do your services ever bring you before the public through the newspapers? Yes, occasionally. Would it uh, be fair to say that uh, you uh, would perhaps be not in the front page, but a little further back in the newspaper? Uh, I've always asked the reporters to put me in the middle because you can get there more often. <laughs> uh, Jim, to be perfectly fair, uh, editorial judgment supervening, our guest could be on the front page in certain circumstances. Uh, in other instances, he would be on the inside. It would depend pretty much on, on what the issue was at that particular time. Would it be right then to say that your services have to do with the mental more than the physical? With both. Gracious. <laughs> Perhaps more with the physical than the mental. Yeah, I was going to say that, uh, that here is one where I think I have to give you a no, Jim, because um, the physical is extremely important in the implementation of the service. Ms. Kilgallen. Uh, Mr. X, do you ever, in the course of your work, wear some sort of clothing that is different from what you're wearing now? Oh, yes. Uh, is it something that is less formal than what you're wearing now? Mm -hmm. Rather than more formal? Not necessarily. Well, it I should would be formal. It should be formal, but I would think here, sir, that you'd agree that the garb that is now being referred to would be less formal in a social sense than that which you yes, are now wearing. definitely in a social sense. Do you wear it indoors? No. Never indoors? Well, you would. Actually, we all move in and out of doors, but its purpose would certainly be other than wearing indoors. So that makes it five down and five to go, Mr. Sir. I'm going to give you one minute because well, you're not Rex, coming close. Mr. X, this, with this costume, might it be designated as some kind of a uniform that you wear? No, I don't. No. Six down and four to go, Miss Francis. Mr. X, do you have any letters after your name? Such as MD um, or yes. PDQ or what? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes? Yes. Why the yes? Um, <laughs> very GWD. <-D. laughs> I bet I'd go to Philadelphia again. Would it be doctor? Yes. Are you a doctor? Yes. You are. Uh, are you a doctor of science? Yes. Are you a scientist? Of course Depends you are. Depends who's making the judgment. <laughs> <laughs> I think we but, would uh, agree that this is a designation which properly belongs to our guest, yes. Are you active in any way in atomic research or action? No, not no. in atomic research. I'm going to throw in the towel for you. This, as I told you, was going to be a tough night, and this is going to hurt you because I know That's certainly that. Jim and I think Dorothy and Bennett and Arlene, I think we'll all remember the minute I say that we have as our guest Sir Hubert Wilkins. Oh, uh, good. <laughs> 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 
is famous. Such is fame. It's wonderful. Actually, so this, this is something. It's, it's a problem that we had um, a great deal of, of difficulty with. We were just afraid that some of you would have a recollection of Sir Hubert's pictures from the papers, particularly because of his, his, uh, his beard. And we decided to take the chance that you wouldn't think of it. Yes, sir. He looks so much younger than his pictures. Ah, no. There we are. <laughs> you look so much younger than your pictures. This is what happened. But I would think that all of the folks who are listening, um, particularly the younger folks who haven't had a chance to grow up with the wonderful career of our guest, should know that Sir Hubert was the first to fly over the Arctic Ocean. You were the first to fly over the South Pole. Uh -huh. Might I add a little to that? First yeah. to fly an airplane over the Arctic Ocean, first to fly over the Arctic continent. Remember that Admiral Byrd was the first to fly to the North Pole. That's right. He was not the first to fly over the continent, over but the, the first country. to fly to the South Pole. And then, if I remember correctly, you also were the first to go in a submarine under the Arctic, or was it Antarct Antarctic? And that's right. That was in 1931, when it was thought to be fantasy. Now the Navy has taken their ship underneath, and it's become a reality. And it's happening all the time. May I ask if you're flying over Pennsylvania for the first time <laughs> in any, for any particular reason? You can't yet see the pole from Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> Do you no. live in Montreux, Sir Hubert? Yes. Actually, Sir Hubert is now uh, with the Quartermaster Corps. You go oh. to the Arctic every year, I believe, don't you, sir? You test for the last, equipment. Every year, for the last 16 years. 16 years. He tests equipment and, and helps to uh, make more efficient our ability to defend ourselves in Arctic climbs. Sir, thank you so much for being our guest. It was wonderful to have you on What's My Life. Thank you. Thank you. That was admittedly a very difficult one. You had only that small chance that you might recognize that beard. And you didn't, happily, and we're proud of you. You may not like it, but we're proud of you. Now let's see what you can do with the second challenge. Will you come in and sign in, please? Clyde W. Farrar Jr., is that right? <laughs> wow. You must have had an athletic career, no matter what else we find out about you tonight. Small one, yes. Where are you from, Clyde? Portsmouth, Virginia. Portsmouth, Virginia. Well, it's nice to have you with us. Mr. Farrar, the panel, panel, Mr. Farrar, will you come over here and join me, please? Uh, do you know how we keep score, Clyde? Yes, sir. All right, then let's let everybody at home and those here in the theater with us, except my friends on the panel, know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right. <laughs> panel, Mr. Farrar is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with Arlene Francis. Uh, Mr. Farrar, is there a product involved in what you do? Yes, it is. Uh, does your obvious strength have anything to do with this product? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, ma'am. One down and nine to go, Mr. Roosevelt. Is this a product which can be found in the home? Yes, sir. Uh, is the uh, product uh, one which is a manufactured? <laughs> no, two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Found in the home and not Well, uh, if it's not manufactured, is it something that is ever alive? Vegetable or animal? Yes, I would say. <laughs> no. Actually, Dorothy, I think we have to give you a no there because we must be concerned here with the stage of development in which the product may find itself or Mr. Farrar may find it. And Couldn't we get Sir to... Hubert back to rule on this? <laughs> <laughs> we may have to. That's three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Farrar, I, I uh, guess it has nothing to do with a breakfast food. If You just have to have your face on a breakfast food and sell nine million boxes. But am I correct in saying it has nothing to do with a, anything that's Eaten at breakfast. No, no Betty. I'm not no, correct. Four out of six. Does have something to do with it? Well, no. does, uh, do most homes have uh, one or some of these? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it something to do with breakfast? 
There's been no call for a conference. I Mr. thought he Sir. said you wouldn't have it for breakfast. I'll send you to the library for the whole week. <laughs> oh, no, I, I guess I didn't hear that. I think I thought... we'd better. May we have a conference? You may yes. have uh, 15 seconds for a conference. Could I just hear I about the breakfast? I asked if I, I took, I said I take it for granted it has nothing to do with breakfast, and I got a no on that, so it must have it something, something to do with breakfast. something you eat at breakfast, something you eat at breakfast. Eat at breakfast. Thanks loads. Yep. <laughs> Is this something that one would eat at breakfast? Yes. If I, if I got a no, then it would have been a dandy, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it is a natural product yes. that one eats at breakfast. Uh, is it um, uh, in the fruit family? <laughs> no, that makes it five down and five to go, Jim Roosevelt. Well, Mr. Farrar, yes. if uh, you eat it at breakfast and it's not fruit, then uh, is it uh, possibly a meat of some kind? No. 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 Six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. You have said that this has never been alive, either as animal or vegetable. Is it the product of something that has been alive? Yes. Is it a dairy product? No. That makes it seven down and three to uh, go, yes. Mr. Sir. I'm going to come back to those breakfast foods. Uh, <laughs> Does this, uh, does this ever come in a box? Yeah. <laughs> uh, would this ever be eaten with uh, cream poured over it? <laughs> I'm not going to stand here before the world. <laughs> Nobody puts cream on it. But perish the thought. That makes it eight down and two to go, Miss Francis. Well, uh, I can only think that if it uh, is a result of uh, something that is alive, uh, it's in the egg family. But that's a dairy yes. product. Yes. That's well, it's not milk. Product. But it's a dairy product. No. no. It's not a dairy product. Dairy products come out of cows, actually. <laughs> <laughs> You haven't seen an egg come out of a cow, and I don't know. <laughs> you do something glorious with eggs, is yeah. that it? <coughs> you might call it that. Do you candle them? That, uh, actually, I think with your permission, we'll accept. Actually, Mr. Farrar is an egg inspector. The oh, candling no. is a part of the inspection. He is... He's an employee of the Virginia Department of Agriculture and has control of the grading, actually. He controls the area of grade A eggs, grade B eggs, and in the candling process, they decide which is A and which is B. Then it you look quizzical. Well, when, well, my, when my fella scrambles an egg, she pours some cream into the pan with the egg. Oh, and the French do, too, all the time. Cream well, but look at the mess France is in currently. <laughs> That is all. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Farrar. Nice to have you as I guess. <laughs> we'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first here is a word from our alternate sponsor. Come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which I ask my friends on the panel to blindfold themselves. Are the blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes. 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 Fine. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? case of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. You ask one question at a time in turn, moving clockwise, and I think it would be a good idea if we began with Representative Roosevelt. Well, as a, an old watcher of the, of the work of the panel, I'm first going to ask whether you're in the in entertainment business. Beep. This is the uh, Sputnik era, as you all know, and we're beeping tonight. One beep tonight. is yes. One beep means yes, and two beeps mean no. Miss Kilgallen. 
Well, I think that beep must also mean that you have a very familiar voice. Are you by any chance a comedian as well as a beeper? Beep. Mr. Yes, sir? He means he doesn't think he's a funny comedian. <laughs> Are you currently appearing anywhere in the metropolitan area? I mean, besides on this television show tonight. Miss Francis? There's quite a variation in the beeps. <laughs> Is there more than one beep over there? Beep. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Roosevelt? When you're not appearing currently uh, in this area, do you um, make movies? Beep. The beep movie. The beep movie. You got a little out of order. Uh, are you married to each other? Beep. Sir. Uh. Are you currently appearing in a comedy on Broadway? Beep. Miss Francis? Bennett, do you think you know who this is? Well, I kind of thought it might be Peter and Mary. That's who I think, <laughs> too. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> John, it's there's nothing Mary's we can... beep that's the giveaway because your <laughs> beep is, is, has the quality of your singing in it, which Ooh. is terribly nice. Well, this was Little Bo Beep. Little Bo Beep. Oh, no. <laughs> I thought out of deference to Bennett, I'd say that. I was afraid oh. Bennett would get us, but you knew, didn't you? All of you. I knew kind of guess. Did you? Oh, you couldn't have. <laughs> yes. I read about right. you today. Well, how, did you, how did you know, though? Because two people, uh, the, uh, the only two, two people, people. I, I wanted to see, two beepers. <laughs> Who was that lady I saw you with is the name of their comedy, and it ends in a preposition, too. And isn't that something? Yeah, and Library that. Week, with a preposition, you do this to us? It was a proposition, actually. <laughs> <laughs> there was no lady. That was Mary Healy, my wife. I, I'd like to say a word. I, I think they're two of the nicest people in show business, and their show is wonderful. Oh, um, Far be it um, for many of us to want to embarrass either one of you, but Bennett has, I think, said something that is so universally felt, and uh, you should both be very proud of it. Very We're nice very people. proud, except that we've never been able to fool the panel. I wish we could. <laughs> I mean, beeps, after all. How far can you go? And the funny thing is, Peter's also a good golfer, too, you know? Well, well maybe he should have used a mashie. <laughs> we have our co-star sitting backstage with us, Mr. Ray Walston. We're all heading up to Westchester now, and we also had the pleasure of going to Billingsley Stork Club, where you have a reservation, so we were terrified that you might know from that. Well, you don't really <laughs> know. Mr. Walston ought to come out and take a bow. Ray, yes, come yes, on yes. out. Suppose we could. Yes. We had, would Ray Walston come out? Ray. 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 <laughs> thank you both very much. And Ray, thank you for thank giving you, us a, a bonus. It's nice to see you she here. She wants to show the back of her dress. And we okay. want everybody to see the back of her dress. say one word here, panel. I went down to Philadelphia last evening to see a good friend of mine, Toot Shaw, get an award, richly deserved as a Philadelphian who'd made good. And I never saw so many people who liked What's My Line, and I promised them one thing, that we'd give you a rough time tonight. I don't know whether I made it or not, but I tried <laughs> anyway. <laughs> we'll be back after this word from our sponsor. Well, let's see, this is quite a week. We have something to say to some friends in St. Louis. As I think all of you folks in St. Louis know, CBS television programs will be seen on KMOX-TV, Channel 4 in St. Louis. It's nice to have you with us. We've been around a long time, and we trust now that you will be around with us for an equally long time. With that happy thought, this is John Daly saying goodnight, Miss Arlene Francis.
Good night, John. It was a pleasure to have you with us, Jim, and remember me to your lovely mother. Thank you, and good night, Dorothy. Good night, it's been Jim. so much nice to be with you. You were a real pro. Come again soon. <laughs> good night, you. Bennett. John, despite your lamentable lack of knowledge of the dairy business, you're still an aristocrat. <laughs> good night, John. <laughs> Now, just because the man brings the eggs and brings the milk and butter, too, doesn't make the eggs dairy products. Yes. Does it? No. I'll look it up in the morning. Anyway, <laughs> thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us on What's My Line. If you'd like to attend our broadcast and see the panel and our guests in person, write for tickets to What's My Line, CBS Television, 485 Madison Avenue, New York, 22, New York. Transportation for contestants on What's My Line is arranged by American Airlines. What's My Line is a Mark Goodson, Bill Totman production in association with the CBS Television Network. This is Hal Sims speaking.